Hi everybody, this is our Integral TV project. Components. For our project, we are going to use Arduino Mega that has the microcontroller at Mega 2560. Why? Because it is based on the philosophy of free software and open source that allows easy programming of it and it is oriented to the builders but the main reason is because it has the needs that we need to send inputs and outputs. We used NEMA 23 that is a stepper motor that works with 2.5 volts and 3.2 volts allowing to a holding torque of 19 kilograms per centimeter and obviously these motors need a driver and the one we used is a driver with the model 2DM542 it's a driver with two fresh stepper motor supporting voltage from 24 volts to 28 volts of direct current for the principal movement of the machine we used a motor of 3 horsepower that has a frequency of 60 hertz and is of 3 poles and its nominal voltage is of 220 to 230 volts the nominal current is 40.3 amperes and this motor has a protection of IP55 also we used an emergency stop button like this and about the sensors we used limit switches for the alimentation of all of direct current components we placed a power phone that gives us 24 volts. For our machine, we have a box that we are going to use for protect the people that could be watching the process of our machine. Also, for use the machine, it's necessary to use a key to turn up the machine. The machine, it has, it has a, a switch that will works as a, the power of the, the machine. When the box is up, the machine is will be off. This is for security. The motor that will be used is a single facet 3 horsepower or 3 HP at 120 volts with a consumption of 6 kilowatts. By means of Ohm's law, the amps are obtained with a result of 51. With this data, we know that the current consumed by the motor requires 6 gauges cables. The connectors we use for NEMA motor driver are of 4 threads with connector at both ends and the caliber of this connector is of 26 American wheel gauges. Power supply maximum consumption. Current 2 amperes. Tension 24 volts. Power 48 watts. For motor consumption, we have 2125 watts per hour. Of the DC power supply consumption is 48 watts per hour and the total machine consumption is 2173 watts per hour. The design was thought to be easy to use for everyone who wants to work. As everything is on the program, the workers just have to watch sometimes the machine to be sure that everything is working as it was programmed. It is covered by some slabs which protect the machine and the components but not allowing people to move or disconnect anything inside the machine. It is used the Arduino to program a stepper motor and a monophasic AC motor to fold the wire. By calculating the steps of the stepper motor, the centimeters will be counted. After that, the wire will be folded by the power of the monophasic AC motor. The rollers are fluted to be sure that the wire will be passing forward and not stuck in the beginning. 
The box on the right side is to save the stirrups that has been done. And on the left side, it has a ventilator that is going to provide air inside. The acrylic box will work as a security for the workers by not allowing if it is open. Also, it has a little hole to allow the pass of the wire. It includes an on-off button and an emergency button in case of an accident. I'm going to explain you how works our design and why we choose these materials to make our integrative. There is the most important part of the project. These pieces are rollers that serve as guys. They are made of steel. The rest of the parts are made of galvanized sheet and a steel plate. They are made of these materials to support the force to bend wire. The reason we are using has protection. An acrylic box is to protect the machine and protect us. These are PTR tubes. PTR is a strong material and it's light. That would be useful in moments we require to move the machine. The PTR tubes are for table legs and reinforcement. The table, the table is made of steel. The steel is uh, very resistant alloy. We need it is resistant because it will carry the the biggest motor as this. As the table will be covered with aluminium to protect the motor of the strange components from outside. Inside you can find two boxes, one for control and where are the electronic components and the other box is where the stirrups will fall with the help of the ramp. You can open here to take the final page. On the left, there are router protection to prevent the table from slipping in places with a little friction. And that's it. The manufacturing process. To weld the base of the integrative project, we are going to use uh, 6013 electrode. Will be enough because the penetration is medium. Uh, it's it is done well. It has a good uh, appearance. The amperage is depend of the person who is working. Can can be seen 60 and maximum 110 amperage. To weld the aluminum parts, we will use the gas welding, the TIG TIG with the tungsten electrode. Now, uh, we are going to use the branch cutter with 4 inch metal cutting disc with which we are going to cut the PTR and for the aluminum sheets, we are going to use grinder with a cutting disc or we can use the oxycut. In this part, we are going to use a grinder with laminated disc to sand any imperfection that the machine has, such as welding bands, dangerous cuts for the user, and general imperfection that the machine has. First, we are, first we need to apply the primer, that is this, uh, that serves to make uh, the surface porous, and the paint has better adi uh, addition but also serves as protection against oxidation. In the second place, we, we can use the paint. It's only to be the same brand as the first, as the primer, sorry, so that we don't know, we don't have problems to apply. And finally, we're going to use the transparent, that is this, which will help us protect the paint from wear by the sun or water. Uh, we also use the acrylic for the protective cover, which will be used to avoid accidents when the machine is working to, to cut the acrylic, we can, 
We can do it with a cutter very small to the tile cutter or we can do, do it with a CNC machine but in this method we have to have careful not to do uh, not to do it quickly because we could burn our material and we don't have to do that and for the screw we only use the a drill with a conical tip to make the the points of uh, now the PTR we are going to use to make the frame of the machine will be these pieces from here, here, here. It's all the frame of our project. And the galvanist sheet will be uh, like the table, I don't know how to say it, like this, this little thing here and another here this is still sheet will be used to machine the system with which we are going to bend the wire rope this we are going to use it to do this little disc and this and also these two pieces The steel bar will be used to make the wire guide which will make it roll or stop and those pieces are the guide uh, in total are five. Now this aluminum we're going to use it for the motor base that will be here. This piece from here like this and another aluminium are going to we are going to use it from a to make a box for the electronic components that it's here and would work like a cover from the dust the water or whatever and finally we will use the acrylic as protect protective cap to prevent them from getting their hands on the machine while it's working so all those pieces are the acrylic now to make the wire road guy we are uh, only going to cut the tube of the desired size to pass it to a lathe and make the design rowing. For uh, to do this little curve from here. And to make rowing we can do it with the knurling that is uh, is this piece uh, with this tool we are going to try to use it to do this maybe we can do it uh, by hand but for the moment we we thought on the normal now to assemble the the machine having all the necessary par parts is done in an easy way, starting with the aluminium and the PTR, and they from the base or machine. For example, this is pieces of PTR. We already have the size, so it's not a problem. And then we add these pieces of aluminium. Then go through the electronic components that will be in a box. We can accommodate, accommodate them in a simple way. Uh, we add the bottoms and the connection to finally to finally join the acrylic to our machine. For example, here are this space for the bottoms is on, off, and stop. And finally, we join the the acrylic to the machine right. 
this and this is how looks our machine finished with all the pieces for example these parts of aluminium are joined with, with the screws so it's easy to take off and now in, the, in this part for the machine of our parts we use the same configuration for all of them since we have no failure while simulation for example uh, the spin the spin speed are the three thousands rpm the feed and x and y are four thousand millimeters per minute and the feed in set uh, in the same way um, 400 millimeters per minute the first pass is a uh, five millimeters and the maximum dip is five millimeters and it has a set retraction of one millimeter so hi everybody uh, first of all this vending machine is composed by three mechanical stages so the first one is a feeder rollers will be rotating in order to move the wire into the machine the second stage is a strider it means wire is gonna get straight by passing through the rollers and the third stage is about the principal process of this machine that is bending the outer road is gonna move around the center row in order to bend the wire as you can see we're using two-step motors to empower the fitting system that way we can specify the amount of wire that is getting into the machine according to the required dimensions of the stirrup then we have a detailed description of each part of this machine first we have the no material sensor that is a limit switch that is gonna let us know when the machine doesn't have any road to bend so machines was, isn't gonna be working that time then we have the rotors to feed the machine and as well to straight the wire and then we have the fixed wheel that is gonna be in the center of the system then we have the gyro wheel that is gonna be rotating around the fixed wheel in order to bend the wire and finally we have a bending limit that is gonna determine the, how the bending angle we were looking for the data sheets and asking providers about the minimal diameter of the wire and we used it to calculate the security factor we don't want to break anything right we also looked for a data sheet that tells us the maximum shear stress that can support our steel that is a 1020 then using the shear stress equation we got the security factor taking into account the maximum shear stress actually the security factor is not that big due to the raw material offers a good quality so it finally is 1.00002 about the dimensions of the machine this is designed to be in a quarter inch road and the biggest figure to make with it is a rectangle of 24 per 35 centimeters the main mechanism of this machine is moved by a 3 horsepower AC motor first we take the force necessary to deform a wire then we calculate the torque of the lever arm and finally we obtain the power of the motor by multiplying the obtained torque by the angular velocity since the market provides us with a proper motor we don't need any transmission to convert forces in that so the motor is directly connected to the rotating wheel and it has enough power to bend the road to be sure about the most important parts of the mechanism we first simulated it in solidworks then when the force didn't affect the structure we determined those were the right dimensions